Hey guys, so we are here with some more episodes of um, our room organization. This uh, week we're going to discuss paper. I know, right? So I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to discuss my paper storage, both ephemera type paper, which if you've watched my art room tour, you've already seen at least part of, and also blank papers waiting to be created into something. And as part of that, although it's technically not paper, I'll show you the spare closet in the other room where I have the really big pieces of paper and blank canvas. All right, which is really scary. All right, I'll be back. Let's start in the part of the art room or art room storage that I'm sort of proud of. <laughs> Um, so this, as you all know, if you've seen the art room tour, is my uh, bits bank. Um, we have our small, um, tiny bits up here in these mini um, Sterilite five-drawer storage units, sort of medium-sized bits in the baskets on top of them, and the baskets in the bottom, with a few exceptions, mostly have different kinds of paper in them. They are labeled, for instance, um, this one is just has bags in it. That one is painted papers. Um, that one is large envelopes. That one is other kinds of random envelopes. You get the idea. This one over here has, um, and I'm pointing like you can see my finger and you can't, um, newspaper and phone books and maps and stuff. This one is just full of tags. You get the idea. Um, so that way I have it organized in a way where I can easily find things that I need or want to use quickly and easily without getting frustrated about how much stuff I have because let's be honest we all have too much stuff I mean I have one bin that's just large vintage and handmade papers this storage system has worked really well for me for a really long time I used a Switch the camera around here I used a version of it in the smaller art room at the old house and when we and I loved it and it worked great and I knew I, when I we moved in here I wanted to expand on that and um I purged probably half of what I had. I know that's really hard to believe. I had a lot of stuff stuffed in that room. Um, and then what I did have, I was able to spread out and find easily. So these are my ephemera bits, my paper ephemera bits, along with other things, but there's a lot of paper in there. And you know whether you have a collection of scrapbooking paper and old book paper, painted papers, um, technically it's paper, paint chips, um, if you have them sorted and organized in a fashion like this, whatever suits your space and your needs, then it makes it much easier to find those napkins when you want to put one on a page. All right, let's go to the blank art paper. The lighting is going to be a little funky here because we're in the closet. Um, and the overhead lights are a little bit yellow. I haven't changed the light bulbs out yet, but this is the... Uh, there's two big closets in this room, and this is the... Uh, left side one, which for the most part stores Etsy store inventory and mailing supplies. Up here are two bins of my small blank journals, aka paper, that are ready to do daily drawings and things in, or if I need a watercolor journal, I've filled one up. I am not buying any more blank journals for the foreseeable future because I probably have enough for like three years. And that's another thing. You, just because it's on sale doesn't mean you have to go buy a whole bunch of them. If you already have, you're like me and you already have a ton in stock. And I'll show you what I mean when we go to the other bookshelf. I haven't bought paper or, um, I haven't bought paper in a long time. I did buy these journals recently from Muji because I do like this size and I actually was, I know, believe it or not, out of them. Um, so I did replace those. And I also, at the same time, bought these moleskin cahiers because I was completely out. And I use those a lot for daily journals, uh, daily drawings. <sighs> I haven't bought art paper in probably three years. This is why. That's one stack. So this, when I make my homemade drawing journals, which... Uh, let me grab one. Look like this. The paper inside is either... This is toned tan by Strathmore or toned gray, or it's this white paper. I prefer to sketch on, for my daily drawings, a certain weight of paper, so I bought a giant ream of it with all these million sheets of paper in it, like two years ago, I still have a lot of it, so I don't need to buy drawing paper probably for the rest of my life. Um, these are some random pads. I haven't bought, again, a pad of paper in probably at least five years, because I don't need to. Um, 
And those are the big, the big papers. And then the smaller ones, look at this. So they are sorted ugh, by type and category, starting with watercolor paper, bigger blank journals. Um, I have art boards down here, mixed media paper, um, vintage typing paper, vellum, carbon paper. There are some delusions journals in there in the corner. Um, so, and there, that cardboard thing is a homemade cardboard journal. Um, so I like storing, storing them on end like this when I can on this bottom shelf, especially with these big things and these journals and books and pa pads of paper, because I can easily get in there, push things aside and sort of filter through it and find what I need, yank the one out, use it or take pages out of it and then put it back. It's a very easy filing system for me and it works really well. With these bigger sheets of paper also works really well because I can pull a few sheets out and get exactly what I need. This over here I need to work on because it's just a mumble, mumbo jumble, jumbled mess. And that top up there in the corner, that's my deli paper, which, yeah, I mean it works. These all work, but it could be better. And I should say, I'm not changing it right now because right now it does work. And with those little journals, I think it's more about finding the right bin to fit them all. And I may have to go with one of these bigger bins like I use in the Big Bits Bank. And that might work a little better. We'll see. I'm going to fiddle with it at some point, but I'm not going to do it right now. Right now it works. So I'm going to just leave it. And it's in the closet. It's messy. But nobody sees it but me. This is... The closet in one of our spare guest rooms. This house actually was built with two master closets. Um, this is just the floor I know. This is the bedroom. It's one of the spare masters. This is we've got sort of the meditation art room. We've got my collection of finished journals and reference books. Some artwork. That TV is actually not plugged in. It's going to be going to my brother. And when it's gone I'm going to hang some artwork up there on that wall or paint something to go up there. It has a really pretty view of the forest and our huge old tree. But it also has a big closet, a walk-in closet. Those are the paintings that are all ready to go. I'm just waiting for the handyman to come hang them up for me in the other room. Anyway, it has a big old closet, <laughs> walk-in closet. It looks like this. I know, really. Ugh. Okay, so we've got Christmas decorations, paperwork. This is my hoard of organizational, like, things. Bins. I know, right? Um, blank canvas by size. These are the smaller and littler ones. And then over here, big, huge ones. And two or three of these are what I want to paint to go behind that TV, but we're not here to discuss that. Uh, my drying rack, my acrylic pouring tray, and then behind that, I have the really big stuff that really can't go anywhere else. So these are big giant sheets of paper that are like 22 by 30 or something. Um, I like Fabriano uh, watercolor paper. I like the big sheets. I don't need a ton of them, but every now and then when I want to do a series of watercolor paintings. It's nicer to work with the big sheets and tear them apart than it is to work for something with a pad. So I store those in here in this closet. We don't really need it for anything else but storage. Um, and also we have homeless paintings back here. So if you're interested in a homeless painting, let me know because we've got a few of them, including some nudes. Anyway, and our face. Is it the neatest, cleanest, most sexy way to organize those big sheets of paper and blank canvases or the pads in the closet? No. Does it work? Yeah. So I'm not really going to change it, right? at least not right now. So how do you store your paper? And do you have any tips or tricks we can share with those people who are struggling with said organization? I would love to hear what they are. Uh, leave something in the comments below. And uh, yeah, if you've done a video on art room organization under one of the specific topics, we do have a playlist. Um, let me know what it is because I'll share your link in the description of that video. All right, that's it for the moment. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If I do have any videos linked, they're in the description. Please check them out. Show them some love. 
if you want to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the art groups on Facebook, or maybe you just want to follow me on social media and see what my daily art practice is like. All those links are in the link tree list of links in the description below, along with my happy email address and a bunch of other stuff, so check it out. The most important thing, of course, is to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.